Let's settle for the details now. Some workers of Ore Mines Limited in Konongo have demonstrated over the alleged encroachment of their concession by illegal miners in the area. They've accused the military of conniving with these illegal miners to take over their lands. Speaking to Joy News, leader of the group Francis Owusu called for the removal of the Chief Inspector of Mines at the Minerals Commission, Obri Yabwa Chumisi, for failing to diligently perform his duties according to them. Francis Owusu has further doubted the capabilities of the about 400 military and police personnel deployed to combat these illegal miners unless certain individuals in authority are removed. The, the, uh, uh, confrontation ensued between these two illegal miners and it took the military to what? To calm nerves down. It is where they leave that Ill these illegal miners do blasting. Within the 100 meters radius, the rules, uh, the, the mine regulation fronts on all those things. And we, we are even calling on the president to sack the, uh, the, uh, the chief inspector of mines, Mr. Chumasi, because it is under his watch, under his negligence, that all these things is what? Ongoing. I understand the government has deployed a task force to fight against Galamse. And even if the government fights against these, these, these things, and then the, those who are the regulators, those who, who are to ensure that the right thing is being done, and they are not acting, why are they supposed to be continuing at post? So we are calling on the minister and the president to show Mr. Chumasi the exit. Because some of these people are there to protect Galamse activities. How on earth a mining company, it just this month, uh, last month, that they appointed, uh, what do you call it, mine manager, which the regulation doesn't allow a mines to be a mines manager position to be vacant for more than six months. But Mr. Chumasi is aware and he didn't do anything about it. So we are calling on the group of Ghana that if you want to win the fight against Galamse, there are people at the inspectorate, at the minerals commission, who are in bed with these illegal miners. That needs to be flushed out. So what you are saying is that even though government has deployed, you know, a number of 400, you know, military men and policemen to the various centres where illegal mining is so prevalent, you are saying that until, you know, some specific people in power are removed, things will not change? Exactly that. Could you believe that? Uh, at the, our petition that we sent to him, he uh, sent a delegation to our site, and the very, to, to our surprise, the very day that these two, two gentlemen came on site, the illegal mining activity did not stop. And as soon as they left, they resumed their work. So before anybody comes down from the ministry or wherever, they communicate to them that a, a certain man, a big man is coming, so you should what, cease operation. And so when you left, then they resumed their work. And that has been the order of the day, under the watch of even military men. And then let, and I repeat, let anybody dares me that what I'm saying is not true. I have pictures and video. We have, we call for military assistance in 2016, when illegal miners besieged a portion of our concession called Buabedro, and the then president, his Excellency uh, Ramani Mahama responded by giving us military men. After they have finished their job, these local directors that I'm referring to, Mr. Okai and uh, uh, Eric Sian, negotiated with these illegal miners and see the portion of the land of the concession to them, which the regulation what fronts on that. And that, that is where I'm calling on the inspective of inspector of mines. What has he been doing about this? Does he have the right as a as, as director to see portion of your concession to illegal miners? These guys have clearly demonstrated that they cannot develop our mines concession. So we want the minister, the ministry, and the president to intervene by getting us foreign partners who can reinvent the wheels of our mines, create a decent job for good people of Ghana. So I understand you've already spoken to Honorable Peter Mewu. Yeah. What exactly did he tell you after you raised your concerns? Uh, the minister has given us some assurances that we should give him one week to respond to our petition. 
he himself will also come down to Konango to verify things for himself. Away from mining, a place to lay one's head is a need every individual strives to satisfy. But to what extent does a man have control over his choice of a place to abide? Left to many, it will be how close the place is to their work location. Well, that is not the case for some Ghanaians on the streets of Accra. The cost of accommodation determines their residence. John News' Joseph Akable visited some parts of Accra where people have been forced to live rough on the streets due to their inability to afford rent. You can't afford. Those that say they are for affordable housing are not affordable, my brother. They are not affordable at all. So, for say no other kind of transition. Say do fifty Ghana. I just come from Jamaica. Meet me that time. Say, the views of some Ghanaians on the streets of Accra on how expensive accommodation has become. Ghana's housing deficit has for the past decade been pegged at 1.7 million. Different government policies, including the affordable housing project, have been rolled out with the aim of alleviating the situation. The efforts may not have yielded much gains, as many continue to live along the streets and in makeshift structures springing up on a daily basis at unauthorized places. It's 1 p.m. on a bright Monday, and I'm walking along the busy tiptoe lane few meters away from the Kwame Nkrumah interchange. I chance upon a family of eight who occupy a makeshift structure hidden from the glare of the public. My name is Mariatu Abdelai. I don't know my age. Abdelai Mariatu, but you didn't feel better. Me, 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 me. I have been here for about 20 to 30 years. I cook rice for sale. And now 30 years. 30 years near here now. Mariatu's place of abode is least desirable. Three small sized wooden structures serve as bedrooms for the entire family. A dry line that zigzags across the little nine yard compound has some wooden boards on ground. They serve as resting place for the children during the day. They have no place of convenience. Mariatu explains why she has no option than to make do. We were here when the disaster occurred. Our place got bent. We sleep outside. We don't have money to rent a good place elsewhere. The prices are high. We cannot afford. That's why we sleep outside. They will ask you to pay for long term. And her sentiments are true. Rent is expensive these days. Uh, when you're talking about prices of rent, I think it differs from place to place. But I think it's on the high side. Average is on the high side. For instance, I stay at Kumasi, and you have to pay about three years advance, and that's almost three thousand Ghana cities for three years advance, and that is single room step contain. Now other places that have act, uh, some places could be uh, 150 cities, depending on the environment you find yourself in. For instance, at Shama, it used to be around 70 Ghana cities before I moved to Kumasi, and depending on the suburbs. So I think it's uh, location to location. But with the areas that you say they are expensive, is it of concern to you? Oh, really? For rent, it's of concern to everybody. <laughs> so <laughs> there is nobody in Ghana unless you have your own house, probably. Unless you have your own house. But it's of a very much concern to everybody. Uh, but quite recently, we see lots of ads. They are building estates, renting them out. Have you tried any of those ones? <laughs> uh, you know, there was a couple of times a friend on, uh, of mine and I went to this state. Uh, enterprise or state housing, they had this collaboration with uh, HFC for government workers. And believe me, you when you go there, the prices were in dollars, so <laughs> it was on the high side. Uh, financial, the actually, and the accommodation of the high room prices, it, it, in fact, in fact, that is very costly, but it's high prices. So, if they buy the panel to be a uh, 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 official, uh, the renter people we are uh, reduced the prices at the building, uh, you know, uh, they are bidding. And, and prices is too much, it's very costly. This, this is why I can say. Um, this time, the, the system is very hard, you know. Um, I think maybe if they do it uh, three months or six months, it will be okay for us. Because the system is Times are tough. It's difficult to get money. They need to help us. Cost of living is high. I wonder which job one can engage in to enable them comfortably rent a place 
Most of the guys sleep outside. We pay 10 cities for wooden structure. It's now 50 cities for a wooden structure. We cannot afford. I used to pay 50 cities at my place. They are now asking for 80 cities. In the midst of all these concerns, Accra and many other parts of the country are witnessing construction of new apartments for rent on a daily basis. But how affordable are they? For Join News, my name is Joseph Akable. Well, rent in Ghana may be expensive, but you should visit the upcoming multi-TV Habitat Fair on the 11th of August at the Accra International Conference Center, where lots of moderate real estate companies will showcase many products and services you can afford. Away from that, midwives at the Good Shepherd Health Center, Tuna, in the northern region, have now resorted to the use of touch lights and light from their mobile phones to deliver babies at the health center. This is a result of a rainstorm that ripped off the roof, cutting power supply to parts of the facility. Join News correspondent Rafiq Salam visited the facility and reports the situation has forced pregnant women to deliver at home rather than the facility, thus resulting in complications for them after delivery. Being close to three months since the Good Shepherd Health Center, located at Tuna in the northern region, had its roof ripped off by a rainstorm. The hardest hit area was the laboratory and the neighbor ward. The laboratory has since been moved to a different location, but in a much smaller space. However, the labor ward still remains same. The zinc still leaks, and women in labor are crammed at the chemical meant for deliveries. With the onset of the rains, midwives here have a dual role of taking care of their clients and also sweep the water that usually flood the ward. Juliana Yelvienibayire is the midwife in charge of the labor ward. When, especially when it rains, the nurses or the midwives say we cannot be here to monitor the women to deliver. We have to go home because of the rain, because we are afraid that the building may collapse on us. And even the laboring women, they also f fear. They are also afraid that uh, the rain can also fall and that the ceilings or the zinc can collapse on them. So it affects the maternal death. As we are saying they should come, we are encouraging the women to come and deliver at the facility. But because of this problem we are having here, they will not come. They will force to deliver at home. And maternal death can occur. The monitoring they need at the facility, they may not get it at home. So it won't be easy. It will really affect maternal death. Power supply to the labor ward has been cut off since the incident occurred. The situation has forced midwives at the labor ward to use such lights and lights from their mobile phones to deliver their babies. When there's no light, sometimes we use our phone, our phone lights too. If that, and for that matter, we need somebody to assist. Sometimes we use this uh, chargeable lamp. And sometimes too, when there's no lights, in the labor room especially, we use this one to buy battery inside. And sometimes we are forced to ask the patient relative to help us with the battery if we don't have money. Sometimes if the patient cannot afford, we, the midwives or the nurses, we have to buy the light, the battery and put so that we can help the woman deliver. Pregnant women who attend dental care at a clinic and are due for labor next month are frightened about the state of the facility. Have a hand is one of them, and she hails from Sumo, a community which is 15 kilometers away from the clinic. I am here for a mental fair, but already frightened yeah. about the data structure. If it started to rain now, I can't sit here. I will be forced to go to my community, which is also far away from here. You can imagine a pregnant woman in the rain. My appeal to the government is to fix the leaking roof so that whenever it rains, we can still be treated here. The Disease Control Office of the Sub-District located at the facility, was also not spared by the rainstorm. Officer in charge of the disease control unit, Jonas Atibela, told me 
Vata drugs and documents kept at the office were destroyed by the rainstorm. It uh, affected um, our sockets and most of them are blown. And because of that, the fridges are also affected. And all vaccines that were kept in the fridge were all destroyed, so we have to discard them. We are so much inconvenient because this fridge, for instance, is not supposed to have been kept here. It has been, it's supposed to have been kept at the stores, uh, but fridge is not completed. So you can look at uh, the ceiling here. Yeah. When, when, whenever it rains, this place We have the Northern Regional Director of Health, Thomas Beb, on the phone with us to uh, give us some understanding on what exactly is happening. Uh, good m afternoon, sir. Well, unfortunately, we lost him on the line there. Uh, Thomas Beb, Northern Regional Director of Health, was supposed to uh, answer a few questions raised in this particular story and whether or not this issue has been brought to his attention on what government is doing to resolve the issue. Hello, Mr. Bebe. Well, unfortunately, we've lost him there. Now, uh, away from that, government begins its first engagement with the public with a town hall meeting at the Tema Metropolitan Assembly. Local government minister, uh, who officially launched a series of meetings to be held in the 216 district, charged the mayor of Tema not uh, to rely only on the district common fund to develop the metropolis, but rather focus on exploring revenue generation ventures to support development in the area. My colleague Matoda Wemega is on the ground now. Hello, Matoda. Yes, I can see your phone. Give me my phone. Hello, Matoda. If you can hear me, what can you report from that town hall meeting happening now in Tema? We're just trying to connect a line. Well, it seems Matoda is struggling to hear me. Uh, well, let's take a listen to the local government minister. The town hall meetings, I hope, will raise concerns in the questions re and answers review process. And it is my expectation that Tema Metropolitan Assembly will integrate these concerns in the planning process. And when it comes to the prioritization, when you engage the stakeholders, you will ensure that you prioritize the concerns that will be raised at this town hall uh, meeting. From my point of view, let me add that it's very important that we consider revenue generation, collection, mobilization, and payment of rates and licenses, and important special tax related to property rates. A place like Tema Metropolitan Assembly should not be relying on common fund. Common fund is so little they cannot use it to help in promoting development of this place. If you look around, there are so many property areas here. The government has directed that the law on land valuation authority should be amended to allow for district assemblies to have local land valuation authorities in their offices. They should have a decentralized mechanism to facilitate valuation of property and ensure that the proper appropriate value is placed on properties and the rates are, paid, are, are placed. And we will entreat people to pay. It's for development of the area. And it's for sanitation. It will be used to ensure that sanitation is improved in this area. That was the local government minister, Haji Alima Mahama, speaking at uh, the launch of that town hall meeting in Tema. Let's now go to Tema and speak to T Matilda Wemega. Uh, she joins us with some updates on that particular meeting. Hello, Matilda. What can you report? Hello, Matilda. If you can hear me, uh, it's been a few hours since this town hall meeting began. What can you report? What's the mood of residents in the area. What have they been saying to uh, the minister, the mayor, and the MP for the area? Well, there seems to be some challenge. Uh, Matilda uh, cannot hear me. 
meanwhile, the information minister has also been speaking uh, earlier at that town hall meeting. The governance process should be a daily process. And that is exactly what these town hall meetings are meant to do. We at the Ministry of Information have various levels of engagements with the Ghanaian citizens. We have what we call the National Policy Summits, which are meant for certain classes of people, those who speak big English, stakeholders, civil society, to meet and digest government policies and critique government policies and make suggestions. But you at the local levels also deserve to participate in the governance process. And that is why we brought your MPs here and everybody here. <laughs> that they come and you meet with them, we tell you what it is government is doing, and then you have an opportunity to also ask questions about what government is doing for you. Hopefully Tilly can hear us now. Hello Matilda, what's happening at that town hall meeting, the first of its kind in Tema? Okay, so Ben, is, it's been a whole day interaction with the uh, residents and opinion leaders here at the community center and community one within the Tema Metropolitan Assembly, where the information minister, as well as other ministers who have gathered this morning today here uh, to interact with the people of Tema to put before them government policies, especially when it comes to issues affecting uh, those within Tema. And I must tell you, it's been an interactive session uh, today because uh, some residents here have had the opportunity, some of them for the very first time, have had a face-to-face -face interaction uh, with the ministers the, here uh, this morning, Venice. And I must tell you that uh, they have raised some uh, issues of concern to them, especially with issues regarding job creation and sanitation issues and security as well. These are some of the issues that uh, uh, residents within Tema are asking the Kufuado-led administration to address for them but I have with me uh, the deputy information well, minister that is uh, Mr. Perry well Okujeto. Matilda before uh, you have Mr. that Okujeto, interview let me first just find a out quick for clarification you. Matilda uh, how did you see this whole interaction this is the first of its kind especially starting with Tema well it's been a successful interaction the idea is to bring governance to the doorstep of, of our people at the local level and this is an initiative that the Ministry of Information has embarked on. This, the Tema event is the launch of the beginning of the 216 town hall meetings that we're going to have this year. Moving forward from here, other metro, municipal, and district assemblies are going to get the attend, uh, have the same type of interaction. The idea is to seek feedback from the people at the local level, as well as also engage the people at the local level on what government is doing, uh, policies of government, seek to explain government policy to the people, and also to solicit feedback from what the people think about our governance process. Mm. Uh, one would also want to find out exactly these issues have been tabled before you. How will these concerns of uh, the people here, the issues they have raised today, how will those issues feed into your planning and policy making, especially at the local level? So that is why at the engagement, we are collating what the, what the issues bothering the people are. Mainly, this is a, a, a metropolitan area. And therefore, the metropolitan chief executive will take up the issues that are the local issues that concern the people. And the assembly will do something about these issues. The ones that concern government, central government at the, the higher level, there were several ministers of state who were here. There were members of parliament within the catchment area who were also here. And therefore, we are going to put together all these concerns. And these concerns are going to go into planning of other policies in, in, in the next cycle. Mm. I know this is the first of its kind. When next are we going? Well, from today, we have a timetable. I don't have the dates on, off the top of my head, but we have a timetable, and within the month of August into September, we're going to have 
different metro municipal and district assemblies take their turn. We're going to have, in certain cases, about 10 a week, so that by the time we inch towards the end of September, the 216 districts would have been done. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, so I just uh, finished interacting with the Deputy Information Minister. He has been outlining uh, the, the, the our plan that government has with regards to this town hall meeting that will be uh, replicated in the 215 remaining district assemblies where he's been assuring that indeed these concerns that have been tabled would all be uh, focused in government's planning and policy, especially when it comes to the local level. But I also have one of the opinion leaders here within Tema to get his uh, understanding of uh, today's interaction with the ministers. Uh, thank you so much, Nishipi, for joining us. Uh, how did today's interaction go for you? No, it's, it's, it's a success program. Uh, this is democracy in full flight. This is the only way the government can put its ears on the ground. I believe that this country can move forward faster if we collate ideas. And the only way we can collate ideas is such for fora. So it has been a success. And I hope that it continues. Because they are saying that it will be moving from place to place as we get on. Like I said, all of our governance is you know, involving everybody. And this is the only way we can be involved. The minister made a very remarkable you know, comment that it is not easy seeing them at various offices. And this is the easiest way that we can channel our grievances mm. to the ministers or the other you know, top so, officials. Nee, let me find out from you. What are the key things that you'd want to be done for, especially Tema? You see, every country will thrive you know, on health. Mm. With uh, health hinges on sanitation. Without sanitation, we cannot be guaranteed of any good health. Mm. So I'm glad that the, 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 the emphasis was on sanitation and health, mm. education and the uh, others. I think it's, it's, it's well on course. Thank you so much. Since the borders on health and sanitation, that alone is sure. a step forward, yes. All right, thank you so much. You're welcome. So, uh, that's Nishipi, who has been also sharing his views on uh, today's meeting uh, here at the Community Center, Benes. Matilda, we're picking some information that uh, uh, some members of the Invisible Forces came in to disrupt the meeting. Can you confirm that, please? Uh, so the concerns raised by the invisible forces here in Tema is that they have supported the party uh, to come to power. And for six months, they've been trying to get the attention of the ministers. They've been trying to get the attention of the mayor, especially about their plans concerning job creation within Tema. And they are so angry uh, from the reaction that I got from them that their response hasn't been forthcoming. Uh, so they are saying that government must immediately address their concerns because they are already threatening that 2020 they are not going to give the, the government that, the, the support that they gave during the last election Venice. but I've also had the mayor reacting to the concerns raised. He says uh, uh, they, they have signed a memorandum of uh, understanding with companies and industries within Tema. You know Tema has been referred to as the industrial hub. They have signed this MOU in order to have a quota from all these uh, companies to ensure that jobs are created for the youth. So he has already begun the process. Uh, the, the, the youth in the area, he's telling them to be patient with him because the process has already begun. Benes. Well, Matilda, thank you very much for the updates. Matilda Wemega coming to us from Tema Community One, where uh, the Kufado led government held its first town hall meeting. Uh, they would replicate this in 215 districts, the, one, the ones left. Uh, we'll take a quick break here now on Joy News today. We'll be back with more stories. Please stay with us. Thanks for staying here on the Joy News channel. You're watching Joy News today with me, Benis. Abu Beidu. Chiefs and elders of Halepe in the Volta region have placed a ban on farming activities in the area and its environs after the Adakru mountain exploded, burying vast farmlands in the area. The cause of the explosion which took place last Sunday is not known, but Joe News is learning a team from the Ghana Geological Survey Department
has been dispatched to the area. The Ghanaian Times reports that fertile farmlands have turned into bare fields with no crops in sight. Although there has been no casualty, authorities are not leaving anything to chance. We are joined on the line now by Volta Regional Minister Dr. Archibald Lecha for some details on this. Uh, good afternoon, Doc. Thanks for your time. Unfortunately, we've lost Dr. Lecha on the line. We'll try to establish him uh, and get some information on this incident uh, for you on this channel here on Joy News. Uh, away from that, heads of second cycle schools will be allowed to admit students on protocol basis for sports and other considerations under the free senior high school program. Education Minister Dr. Matthew Opoku Prempe says such admissions will be formalized through the computerized school selection and placement system. Ohiming Teria reports. Implementation of President Akufuado's flagship campaign promise of free senior high school begins in September. Beneficiaries will pay no admission, library, science center, computer lab, examination, and utility fees. The policy will also cover second cycle agriculture, vocational, and technical institutions. There were fierce protocol admissions which have suffered under the computerized school selection and placement system will be abolished. Dr. Poku Prempe, however, says the old age arrangement will stand. I do understand and I do know that there's an issue of protocol. There is an issue of sports men and women. I am not going to cancel it, but we have to get those details before CSSPS comes out. When CSSPS comes out, the day it comes out, parents will see it, schools will see it. There is not going to be any lack between the day parents get it and schools get it. So me, I'm closing the rent seeking in my office. When we say rent seeking, it's a lovely term for bribe seeking. The education minister is in Kumasi to meet with a conference of education directors heads of second cycle schools as well as metropolitan, municipal and district chief executives. The consultative meetings form part of government's engagement with stakeholders on the implementation of the free senior high school policy. Meanwhile, Dr. Voku Prempe says the procedure used to determine student intake in schools will remain. He however warned heads against acts of bribery in the admission process. As heads of school, you had a criteria for taking day students and boarding students. That criteria is not going to change. At least for the basics, it depends upon the number of beds. If you can, children cannot sleep standing. They have to sleep lying. And I'm saying that we have used the CSSPS. We know how many students were placed in Prepa College in 2015. 2014, 2015, and 2016. Well, Hemingtera with that report. Now let's go back to the Volta region. Uh, we are joined on the line now by Volta Regional Minister Dr. Archibald Lecha. For more details on that uh, explosion of a mountain in Adaku uh, that has caused some uh, lands to become infertile. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Uh, from the initial information you've gathered from the traditional authorities in the area, what actually happened? Hello, please, please, please come again. Hello, can you hear me, Doc? Yeah, difficult, quite faint. I'm asking what actually happened based on the information you've gathered from traditional authorities in the area where this occurred. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I had information from um, uh, a member of my party in Adapuro on uh, uh, Saturday evening or Sunday morning that something strange had happened on the mountain. So I quickly went there, but I wasn't able to climb to the top. And uh, I managed to get a journalist to... To, to be taken up there by the local tour guide uh, to look at exactly what was happening on top of the mountain. 
And uh, the report I had said that there was um, an explosion that sent fragments and mud water running down the slopes last Sunday in the morning. And last week, last week Sunday. But we got to know uh, six, seven days after that. Uh, um, I was told that this, this lasted for about 15 minutes. Uh, and it happened in the wake of a, a thunderstorm. And uh, people around the mountain are quite uh, scared. Uh, there, were, there were rocks uh, that are buried, the uh, vast farmlands on the slope of the mountain, um, making the people uh, deciding that they were not going to farm until something was done to reassure them of their safety. So this morning, I, 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 I summoned the Ghana Geological Survey Department and uh, as are now, they've gone to the site and they will come back in the afternoon to give me um, a, a report as to what exactly happened. Mm. Uh, but we are picking some reports that uh, lands that uh, had crops growing on them after this incident uh, went bare. Yeah, they were covered. They were covered by, by whatever material. Um, like it, 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 there was uh, water gushing out of one area, uh, some rocks flying from another area and some muddy uh, substance coming out of another part and uh, burying the farmlands uh, along the slope of the mountain. Uh, people's farms have been destroyed and uh, we, we think that we need to understand what exactly happened All because right. there's a phenomenon in the area where buildings get cracked, the walls of buildings are, uh, are cracked for, 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 for a long time now. And we only suspected that something was happening in, uh, uh, in, in, inside the mountain. And uh, we were told that this has not, what happened a week ago has never happened before. All right. Uh, and uh, they, they believe that um, the people say that it's the anger of the rocks. But, 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 but you see, we also believe that there may be a huge reservoir of water uh, in the mountain, which finally burst through the rocks. All right. Uh, on this mountain that is about 700 uh, m m meters high. All right, Doc, while we wait for uh, the report from the Geological Survey Department, how true are reports uh, that there is an imminent food crisis in the area? Oh, yeah, because people's farms have been destroyed. Uh, but, uh, but of course, uh, Adakul is a, a very vast land. And uh, this is only destroyed farms along the... Uh, the slopes of the mountain, but there are other farms. Uh, so people's food farms have been destroyed. Obama suffer from uh, food uh, short shortages. But uh, uh, we, we are assessing the situation. As I said, the Geological Survey Department will, will give me a report in the next couple of hours. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Dr. Archibald Lecher is the Volta Regional Minister helping us understand this occurrence uh, that happened a few uh, days ago at, at Daklu. Thanks for watching this edition of Joy News Today. For more news, log on to myjoyonline.com. You can also follow us on social media on Facebook and Twitter. Our name is Joy News on TV. My name is Benes Abubedu. Once again, many thanks for your company.